This episode is brought to you by IVP. Do you feel ill-equipped to respond to systemic issues of race? In our book, Faithful Anti-Racism, Chad Brennan and I remind readers that Christ has overcome the world, including racism. We call readers to put research-backed practices to immediate use, moving past talk and entering the fight against racism in hopeful ways. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive Faithful Anti-Racism for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading. Psalm chapter 18, verses 25 through 50. You prove to be loyal. To one who is faithful, you prove to be trustworthy. To one who is innocent, you prove to be reliable. To one who is blameless, you prove to be deceptive to one who is perverse. For you deliver oppressed people, but you bring down those who have a proud look. Indeed, you light my lamp, Lord. My God illuminates the darkness around me. Indeed, with your help, I can charge against an army. By my God's power, I can jump over a wall. The one true God acts in a faithful manner. The Lord's promise is reliable. He is a shield to all who take shelter in him. Indeed. Who is God besides the Lord? Who is a protector besides our God? The one true God gives me strength. He removes the obstacles in my way. He gives me the agility of a deer. He enables me to negotiate the rugged terrain. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend even the strongest bow. You give me your protective shield. Your right hand supports me. Your willingness to help enables me to prevail. You widen my path. My feet do not slip. I chase my enemies and catch them. I do not turn back until I wipe them out. I beat them to death. They fall at my feet. You give me strength for battle. You make my foes kneel before me. You make my enemies retreat. I destroy those who hate me. They cry out, but there is no one to help them. They cry out to the Lord, but he does not answer them. I grind them as fine wind-blown dust. I beat them underfoot like clay in the streets. You rescue me from a hostile army. You make me a leader of nations. People over whom I had no authority are now my subjects. When they hear of my exploits, they submit to me. Foreigners are powerless before me. Foreigners lose their courage. They shake with fear as they leave their strongholds. The Lord is alive. My protector is praiseworthy. The God who delivers me is exalted as king. The one true God completely vindicates me. He makes nations submit to me. He delivers me from my enemies. You snatch me away from those who attack me. You rescue me from violent men. So I will give you thanks before the nations, O Lord. I will sing praises to you. He gives his king magnificent victories. He is faithful to his chosen ruler, to David and his descendants forever. 2 Samuel chapter 22 verses 26 through 51. You prove to be loyal to one who is faithful. You prove to be trustworthy to one who is innocent. You prove to be reliable to one who is blameless. 
but you prove to be deceptive to one who is perverse. You deliver oppressed people, but you watch the proud and bring them down. Indeed, you are my lamp, Lord. The Lord illumines the darkness around me. Indeed, with your help, I can charge against an army. By my God's power, I can jump over a wall. The one true God acts in a faithful manner. The Lord's promise is reliable. He is a shield to all who take shelter in him. Indeed, who is God besides the Lord? Who is a protector besides our God? The one true God is my mighty refuge. He removes the obstacles in my way. He gives me the agility of a deer. He enables me to negotiate the rugged terrain. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend even the strongest bow. You give me your protective shield. Your willingness to help me enables me to prevail. You widen my path. My feet do not slip. I chase my enemies and destroy them. I do not turn back until I wipe them out. I wipe them out and beat them to death. They cannot get up. They fall at my feet. You give me strength for battle. You make my foes kneel before me. You make my enemies retreat. I destroy those who hate me. They cry out, but there is no one to help them. They cry out to the Lord, but he does not answer them. I grind them as fine as the dust of the ground. I crush them and stomp them like clay in the streets. You rescue me from a hostile army. You preserve me as a leader of nations. People over whom I had no authority are now my subjects. Foreigners are powerless before me. When they hear of my exploits, they submit to me. Foreigners lose their courage. They shake with fear as they leave their strongholds. The Lord is alive. My protector is praiseworthy. The God who delivers me is exalted as king. The one true God completely vindicates me. He makes nations submit to me. He delivers me from my enemies. You snatch me away from those who attack me. You rescue me from violent men. So I will give you thanks, O Lord, before the nations. I will sing praises to you. He gives his king magnificent victories. He is faithful to his chosen ruler, to David and to his descendants forever. First Chronicles chapter 21, verses 1 through 17. The Lord sends a plague against Israel. An adversary opposed Israel, inciting David to count how many warriors Israel had. David told Joab and the leaders of the army, Go, count the number of warriors from Beersheba to Dan, then bring back a report to me so I may know how many we have. Joab replied, May the Lord make his army a hundred times larger. My master, O king, do not all of them serve my master? Why does my master want to do this? Why bring judgment on Israel? But the king's edict stood despite Joab's objections. So Joab left and traveled throughout Israel before returning to Jerusalem. Joab reported to David the number of warriors. In all Israel, there were 1,100,000 sword-wielding soldiers. Judah alone had 470,000 sword-wielding soldiers. Now Joab did not number Levi and Benjamin, for the king's edict disgusted him. God was also offended by it, so he attacked Israel. David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now please remove the guilt of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. The Lord told Gad, David's prophet, Go tell David this is what the Lord says. I am offering you three forms of judgment from which to choose. Pick one of them. Gad went to David and told him, This is what the Lord says. Pick one of these. Three years of famine, or three months being chased by your enemies and struck down by their swords, or three days being struck down by the Lord, during which a plague will invade the land and the angel of the Lord will destroy throughout Israel's territory. Now decide what I should tell the one who sent me. David said to Gad, I am very upset. I prefer to be attacked by the Lord for his mercy is very great. I do not want to be attacked by men. So the Lord sent a plague through Israel and 70,000 Israelite men died. God sent an angel to ravage Jerusalem. As he was doing so, the Lord watched and relented from his judgment. He told the angel who was destroying, That's enough. Stop now. Now the angel of the Lord was standing near the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between the earth and the sky with his sword drawn and in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. David and the leaders covered with sackcloth threw themselves down with their faces to the ground. David said to God, Was I not the one who decided to number the army? I am the one who sinned and committed this awful deed. As for these sheep, What have they done? O Lord my God, attack me and my family, but remove the plague from your people. 
2 Samuel chapter 24, verses 1 through 17. David displeases the Lord by taking a census. The Lord's anger again raged against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go, count Israel and Judah. The king told Joab, the general in command of his army, Go through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and muster the army, so I may know the size of the army. Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God make the army a hundred times larger right before the eyes of my lord, the king. But why does my master, the king, want to do this? But the king's edict stood, despite the objections of Joab and the leaders of the army. So Joab and the leaders of the army left the king's presence in order to muster the Israelite army. They crossed the Jordan and camped at Aror, on the south side of the city, at the Wadi of God, near Jazir. When they went on the Gilead, into the region of Tatim Hodshi coming to Danjan, and on around to Sidon. Then they went to the fortress of Tyre, and all the cities of the Hivites and the Canaanites. Then they went on to the Negev of Judah, to Beersheba. They went through all the land, and after nine months and twenty days came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of warriors to the king. In Israel, there were 800,000 sword-wielding warriors, and in Judah, there were 500,000 soldiers. David felt guilty after he had numbered the army. David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now, O Lord, please remove the guilt of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. When David got up the next morning, the Lord's message had already come to the prophet Gad, David's seer. Go, tell David, this is what the Lord has said. I am offering you three forms of judgment. Pick one of them, and I will carry it out against you. Gad went to David and told him, Shall seven years of famine come upon your land? Or... Shall you flee for three months from your enemies with them in hot pursuit? Or shall there be three days of plague in your land? Now decide what I should tell the one who sent me. David said to Gad, I am very upset. I prefer that we be attacked by the Lord for his mercy is great. I do not want to be attacked by human hands. So the Lord sent a plague through Israel from the morning until the completion of the appointed time. 70,000 people died from Dan to Beersheba. When the angel extended his hand to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented from his judgment. He told the angel who was killing the people, That's enough. Stop now. Now the angel of the Lord was near the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. When he saw the angel who was destroying the people, David said to the Lord, Look, it is I who have sinned and done this evil thing. As for these sheep, what have they done? Attack me and my family. New Testament reading, Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 44, the triumphal entry. After Jesus had said this, he continued on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. Now when he approached Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go to the village ahead of you. When you enter it, you will find a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say the Lord needs it. So those who were sent ahead found it exactly as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and had Jesus get on it. As he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he approached the road, leading down from the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice, for all the mighty works they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if they keep silent, their very stones will cry out. Jesus weeps for Jerusalem under judgment. Now when Jesus approached and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you had only known on this day, even you, the things that make for peace. But now, They are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and surround you and close in on you from every side. They will demolish you, you and your children, within your walls, and they will not leave within you one stone on top of another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, the triumphal entry. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. 
they began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Do not be afraid, people of Zion. Look, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things when they first happened. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that these things had happened to him. So the crowd who had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead were continuing to testify about it because they had heard that Jesus had performed this miraculous sign. The crowd went out to meet him. Thus the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you can do nothing. Look, the world has run off after him. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. God, I thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for being a covenant-keeping God. Thank you for being a holy God who hates sin, absolutely abhors sin of every kind, O God. Would you help us, O Lord God, to hate, O Lord God, what you hate, O Lord God, which is sin. Would you help us, O God, to be repulsed, O Lord God, by our own proclivity toward sin, O God? Would you help us to be, to have an aversion to disobedience, O Lord God. So many times, O God, we're tempted, O God, like David, to rely on our own strength, to rely on our own numbers and skills, O God, to get us out of situations, O God, when you've already declared and given us the victory and so many things, O Lord God. Would you help us to trust in you? Would you help us, O Lord God, to trust, O God, in your word and knowing, O God, that you are trustworthy, O God, that you're not a man that you should lie, O Lord God. That if you said it, you're going to do it, O Lord God. And knowing and remembering that none of your words, O Lord God, that you sent forth, O God, will, will return to you void. Would you help us, O Lord God, to search our hearts, O Lord God, for, for the ways in which, O Lord God, we continually rely on our own strength, O God, instead of trusting you fully, O Lord God. Would you reveal that to us? And then would you help us, O Lord God, to confess that and, and to bring that to you in prayer, O God, and ask, by the power of the Spirit, that you would um, strengthen us and fan the flames of our faith, O Lord God, so that we can trust you more and more, O Lord God. And just seeing, O God, that, goodness, the the judgments that you gave, O God, the options, the options, O God, for judgment, O God, that you gave, first of all, just the grace and even giving options for judgment, although that's an options that we probably don't ever want, but just that there's there's grace, oh God, and mercy on display there, that you even gave da- David options, oh God, on which judgment to, to pick and to choose. And he wisely chose to receive the judgment directly from you, oh God, which is via a plague, oh God, knowing that he could bank on your mercy, knowing that he could bank, oh God, on your compassion, knowing he could bank on your grace, oh God. We know that you are gracious, passionate God, abounding in love. Thank you, oh God, that we see that displayed, oh God, when you stopped the angel of death from killing. Thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God. And I thank you, oh God, that we we saw, we see your grace, oh Lord God, the pinnacle of your grace, oh God, we see in Jesus Christ, oh Lord God. Going to Calvary, all the way to Calvary, he went, oh God, for me. He went for you. He went for us. Thank you. Thank you, O oh God, that they hung him high, stretched him wide, but he bowed his head. For me, he died. That's love. Thank you, O oh God, for the gospel. Thank you, O oh God, that Jesus died, O oh God, was buried and rose again, O oh Lord God, and is returning for us. Thank you for the grace, O oh Lord God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for salvation, O oh God. Would you help us? Help us, O oh Lord God, to be able and to always delight, O oh God, in the gospel, and to never, ever, ever, O oh God, treat it like it's a small thing. It was not a small thing. Jesus paid a great price, O oh God, to call us in to the family of God, to move us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So I say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You're worthy of praise. God, I pray this all in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen.
We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag truths table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee.